Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to talk about uh, some surfacing, and uh, so we're going to draw a surface base file, and then we'll get into some 3D tool paths. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to start out with, let's say, a 3 by 2 uh, rectangle, and then we'll come in and just throw a little uh, fillet in the corner here and here. And then I'm going to draw a circle. Okay. And then I'm just going to create a, a line between here and here. And then I'll go ahead and delete this top half. Now, as with most things, there's many different approaches that you can take. And uh, so this is the direction that I've gone in here. So I have my wireframe. I'm going to uh, create a, a copy, so I want to translate this shape uh, back. So I want to move it uh, back in Z. And then I also want to move it uh, up in Y. So we have uh, this transition coming through here. So we'll make this 1.375. We'll make this minus four and we'll choose okay all right so now we have that one there and then um, from here we I want to move this one forward so we'll do utility translate uh, we don't really need a copy here just chain select that and uh, I'm gonna move it down in Y you know and maybe we'll move it uh, two and a half inches out in Z and we'll choose OK and then cancel alright so we have our three different uh, sets of wireframe at this point I'm gonna delete these lines on the top because I don't need them I'm gonna create a new layer make it active change my uh, drawing color and then uh, let's go ahead and do some surfacing so there's lots of different surfacing options and uh, in this example, I just want to use a cross section, so I'm going to shift click here, shift click here, right click OK, and that gives me my first transition, and we'll choose OK. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I, I want to continue to draw on this second layer, so I'm going to make the first layer active, I'm going to hide the second layer, and then make the second layer active, so this way I can draw and they just get blanked out. Uh, we're going to do a cross-section surface from here to there. All right, so that's what it looks like there. And we'll uh, spacebar, right-click OK. So that's good. I'm also going to do an extrude curve here. And this one's going to be along Z. And uh, let's see which way this is going. OK. So we're going to just this one out a little bit that one will say uh, two and a half okay and then we're gonna do the same thing over here like that two and a half okay all right so at this point we have our blended channel uh, that we're working with so we we're, we're on an angle we come down and then uh, we blend from this channel out to this radius and that radius then continues on now uh, again we just have uh, surfaces here uh, that was just a quick example of uh, surfacing all right guys so picking up where we left off we have our surface model and then we want to uh, lay down some path for this. Uh, in this example, I really really want to focus on finishing, so I'm going to run my stock wizard, not so concerned uh, where my stock is, and my zero, I'm just going to pick up back here. I do want to make sure my uh, zero aligns with the part, even though I've drawn the part basically extruded in Z. Um, I want to change that so this vertical line here represents Z, so I'm going to do Z direction and click on this line, and then I'll swap it, so that's positive Z, and then uh, I want uh, X to be 
this orientation here, and then I'm going to swap my Y direction. Uh, so I have X, Y, and Z uh, as far as my orientation. So I'll choose OK. Let me go ahead and uh, blank out the stock model. Okay, let me uh, load up a three axis toolpath. Just going to select all the surfaces. We're going to look at a planar toolpath. Set up a ball mill, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to make this zero degrees. And everything else is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and compute this. And uh, what you're going to see is just the, the surfacing toolpath to run back and forth over the model. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that this vertical wall here, there's really no toolpath being generated on it because uh, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, align with the step over. The step over isn't to the surface, it's to the XY plane. Uh, we were able to generate some toolpath along this surface here because you can see it flares out a little bit. Uh, this uh, top view probably helps understand the step over a little bit better and why we're missing these surfaces here. So uh, the planer, that's, that's a great option for you. You can go back and forth, um, cut along the model. Uh, some of the new things we, we've added in here has to do with angle ranges. So we can say, um, you know, cut between these angles, which would be your uh, shallow. Um, or we can say cut outside of these angles, which would be your steep. And, uh, you know, the software will adjust where that toolpath is generated based off those angle ranges. Um, not really what I wanted to focus on in this example, just kind of uh, touching on that real quick so you can see how uh, the toolpath being generated is affected based on your angle range. Okay, so uh, planar, uh, very common. There's actually a, a lot of really new, new, uh, new facets to the planar uh, that uh, can be very useful. But one of the things you'll notice is that you know we're not getting a consistent finish on both these walls and the floors. Uh, the next option really to look at would be the equidistant. So we can use this equidistant. Uh, we're going to use just the default settings again. Uh, we'll just leave them the way that they are. We'll finish this and uh, let's blank out our planer and then we'll compute our uh, equidistant. And, you know, in this example, you're going to see that uh, we'll get a more consistent finish on the part and it will actually uh, be detecting the, the vertical walls as well. So that way, uh, you can see throughout the entire model we're getting a, a nice consistent finish both on the vertical walls and on the floors. Um, you do get change in direction here so you, you know depending on your machine and backlash and, and things like that that can uh, affect your finish uh, but this is a, a, a better option than the planer to get a more consistent finish along the surfaces. Uh, the last one that I wanted to look at real quick is for multi-axis users. We can insert mill multi-axis we're going to do a surface based path. We're going to do more between two curves. Uh, again, we'll, we'll set up our tool diameter. There's a, a lot of options in the multi-axis, so I'm going to just uh, keep it short. We're going to morph between two curves, so I'm going to select these edges here for my first curve. I'm going to select these edges here for my second curve. Now you could use uh, wireframe or surface edges. In this case I have surface edges so that's what I'm going to use. I have my drive surfaces. One of the things that you want to be careful of is with your drive surfaces. See how uh, this uh, normal is facing down and so is that one and this back one here. Uh, that will affect your tool path so I'm going to go ahead and cancel real quick, finish, and then I'll come in here to utilities and I just want to reverse the surface normals here uh, so that way they're all facing the same direction, which uh, in this case happens to be in. Okay, so we can turn our surface norm normals off now. We can uh, get back into our multi axis, select our drive surfaces. We'll go ahead and select everything here. Uh, a couple of other options, but we'll do two-way cutting, so we'll say zigzag. Uh, 
tool axis control is going to be for three axis. I'll go ahead and compute this the way that it is now. And here we can see our tool path uh, going back and forth. Now, uh, we're going to see some retracts back here. I'll address that in just a second. But you will see how uh, the tool path starts from the tangency point and then it blends following the drive surfaces from one end to another. Uh, if we wanted to clean up these, um, these rapids here, what we can do is get into our links page and right now our gaps, we're going to clearance so we can do a blended spline, blended spline, recompute, and then now you'll see that smooths that out quite a bit. So three different uh, finishing toolpath options. Uh, just a quick overview. If you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.